delighted to welcome you back here to Magdala. I am with Father Eamon Kelly right in front of Duke in Altum. And this is the beginning of our pilgrimage of freedom called Exodus. And so Father Eamon and I are going, we're just delighted to be able to lead you during this Lenten period through this Exodus that we have planned for you in this virtual pilgrimage. And um, Father Eamon, now has his masses being transmitted on our new YouTube channel. Isn't yes, that we've got a new YouTube channel, Magdala English. Make sure your friends know because otherwise they will miss Kathleen of Alexandria, no, sorry, Catherine <laughs> of Alexandria, one of the patron saints of our, of our <laughs> pilgrimage. And of course, Kathleen of Denver as well, yes. of Colorado, Kathleen of Colorado. Yes. Born in Wyoming, but I'll take the Colorado. So actually, we do have more than just Father Eamon and I. We have a wonderful team behind the cameras in our ever-growing Magdala Media team. And we do have Moses, who will be traveling with us. Our symbol, of course, is the staff. And Elijah, who also had a really important role, not only in his life as a prophet, but he also went up Mount Sinai. And he also went up Mount Tabor. He sure did. He did. Well, he came down to Mount Tabor. He didn't go up to Mount Tabor. That's both Moses and Elijah. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. And so together with Father Eamon, uh, we'll have a same, the same dynamic as we've had on our last five larger virtual pilgrimages. We've actually done seven now uh -huh. um, since COVID. And our first one was uh, in October of 2020. And then we had our, pil the most important ones are our pilgrimage of faith, where if you remember, Father, we talked about sorry, the creed. We talked about the creed, um, what we believe, what we profess, what the Lord did when he created us and redeemed us and saved us. And that's, that's actually really important as a first step. And then another, well, we did a couple of them. Another one which, which goes along the line of our pilgrimage of freedom was the pilgrimage of grace, if you remember. We yes, did of that. course. Yes. With all the, the encounter with God, the strength that we need, that we get from God, and without which we wouldn't have anything. We would disappear like smoke. Well, it's, you know, what we, what we profess comes into us, his life comes into us. And then on this is when our pilgrimage of freedom comes right uh, in that line of pilgrimages because what we believe, the life that's given to us, and how we let his grace transform us. We could say, as the um, Eastern Fathers say, they, it deifies us. It makes us like God. It helps us to, to live a good life or a life that's appropriate, a life that's full of virtue. So it makes us like God, but... I would say it also makes us human, right? Well, yes. Uh, if the first thing we are made in the image and likeness of God by creation, mm -hmm. and that uh, had a few crashes along the road, <laughs> so we have to be renewed, and then that's the work of grace, and to be in the fullness of the gift of creation that God has given us is already a huge step. It is. The glory is. of God is man alive. That's right. And when is man alive? Is man alive? being selfish, being narrow-minded, small-hearted, or being generous, being a peacemaker, being a person of generosity. A person is able to also endure difficult moments, and for that we need a lot of grace to you know, live the fullness of our personhood. In fact, it reminds me of Matthew 19. There was a rich young man, maybe in this area, we don't know exactly where, mm -hmm. certainly in the Lord's public life, who came up to Jesus and said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And I don't know if you want to remind all of us what the Lord responded to him. Well, first of all, to keep the commandments. <laughs> yes. Now, sometimes people see the commandments as being very restricting, but this is a restrictive. This is a pilgrimage of freedom, yes. an exodus from slavery. And so the Ten Commandments are basically the equipment you have to be able to glide. We have a lot of gliders coming through here. They give you the freedom to operate fully in the image and likeness of mm -hmm. God. They give you the, the borders, the, the banisters on the stairs. They give you the, the support points you need yes. for, for the walk. In fact, you, saw, you also were, make, maybe it was near the Mount of Beatitudes, you were making reference to that just now when you're talking about blessed are the peacemakers. Mm -hmm. In fact, they say, and the Mount of Beatitudes is right over here, right behind right us. Behind us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right across right behind the water. The mm -hmm. You can actually get there in about a two-hour paddleboard ride if you want to. But or you could walk <laughs> there in about an hour and a quarter. Well, that would be a fast walk, but yes, you certainly can. Well, an can. hour and a half. Yes. yes. It's part of the Jesus Trail, which is mm -hmm. so amazing. But on top of the Mount of Beatitudes, um, Jesus gave that, well, on the Mount of Beatitudes, he gave that wonderful Sermon on the Mount. And within that, he gave what many uh, scripture scholars call the New Commandments with the Beatitudes, and I think uh, there's many that are really important. You were commenting to me just now on 
uh, the peacemakers and also the pure of heart in a way. Mm -hmm. And then there's the suffering for justice sake. So there's, there's something amazing, you know, you look through the great people of history, uh, they are the ones who went through terrible trials and came out still loving, forgiving. Uh, they, they rode above the, the smallness, the, the human heart was fully developed again to be a complete reflection of God in, mm. in our lives. And this is the restoration of grace, the rebuilding of us, the becoming the new person in Christ. So really the moral life is much more than just don't do this and don't do that and don't oh, yeah. do that. It's really to come to a fullness of expression of the gifts of our humanity. It's like being able to run, you mm -hmm. know, to run, not just to walk, but to run. And to fly and to glide. And to glide yeah. as well. <laughs> In fact, on the Mount of Beatitudes, they call Jesus when he's speaking those Beatitudes, the new Moses. And there's yes. that other Mount of Mount Tabor, as you made reference yes. to. And uh, the two people that were with him, again, Moses and Elijah, and that, that mount was really important because of um, the time, the timing, right? It's perfect for Lent in a way. Right. Well, it's, uh, it's an anticipation of Jesus' Passover. Mm -hmm. And so Lent is a preparation for that. And it's a revelation again of divine glory in the human nature of Christ. He's radiant and it's in the human nature. It's not some mysterious thing behind a cloud on Mount Sinai. It's already evident and open to their eyes. Right. And they see also Elijah and, um, and Moses in mm -hmm. glory. Mm -hmm. So they, it's a, an extraordinary experience and it helps us where we need to get to. But we need to go through the Mount of Beatitudes to the beatitude through being able to suffer for justice sake and that takes an incredible moral development in the human being and uh, not to indulge in revenge and hatred and violence and aggression but to become that person the peacemaker that isn't a peacemaker with words yeah. but is a peacemaker with their very person you know and i often think moses many ways had to be a peacemaker and elijah had to be a peacemaker but they were also in certain sense a sign of division i mean they they really stirred people's up people up to bring the best out of them and according to what the Lord wanted. But also on the Mount of, um, of uh, Transfiguration, it was just before our Lord w went into his passion. It's almost as if, you know, if we have to walk through the desert of Lent, these 40 days of Lent, we have to remember that the promised land or this, this vision, this beatific vision, this transfigured Lord is at the, other, at the other end. And I was thinking also about that other Mount, which is, uh, farther to the south in the desert. The Mount of, of Temptations. Yeah, Lent starts with that. We'll be doing yes. the liturgy with you. That's amazing really because yeah. it's all of this pilgrimage, all, every pilgrimage is really um, a miniature of life. It's like a compressed life. And the Mount of Temptations is also a reflection of the people that are tempted at Mount Sinai in the spite of the great theophany. And it's interesting that Jesus goes from baptism into the promised land because the people went into the promised land there but he goes into the land of temptations mm -hmm. and the land of struggle and the moral life isn't just easy and saints <laughs> have halos but uh, you know they look like they're all very holy but they went through hell <laughs> to become saints yeah. so the commandments guide us there but then the moral life is much more it's developing of all of the the fullness of virtues of love of, of hope mm -hmm. of um, the total gifting that God has placed in every human being. Well, absolutely. I think the, the human experience is that it's not easy. In fact, we can't do it. You read through the books of the Old Testament from you know, the very beginning all the way through Kings and then all of the books. You just see how uh, the ancient Israelites were faithful and then they weren't faithful and then they, they struggled and then they're, they're back with God and then they're not and then they're back with God and then they're not. They're happy and then they're upset. It's just that's the human nature and we can't we can't do it ourselves. So we need the Lord within us. And that's thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so thank goodness, Father Eamon will be here in Magdala holding down the fort and guiding us every single day in our liturgy. So you can join him for mass every day with a homily according to the liturgy of Lent, right. making reference to what we will be seeing after Mass. Uh, I believe Mass will be at 6.30 as usual. Yes. Uh, that's local time, of course. Right. <laughs> and then we'll be transmitting the pilgrimage at 7.30 p.m., so an hour after your Mass begins. Yes. And hopefully it becomes um, just a time to set aside for the Lord during this Lent. Because what will we be doing? Where will we be going? Um, as Father Eamon's here, we'll be out in Egypt. We're starting on the Nile River. We'll be going through the different temples. Kathleen that... is going there. She says yes, we, but she's we. going there. Well, I we because I'm looking at the wonderful team in front of me and also each one of you when you follow us. It's, you know, I'm, I'm there uh, 
my feet are your feet, my eyes are your eyes, what I see, what I sense, everything uh, is for you. And that's why I want to transmit that to each and every one of that's you. That's a beautiful so. thought mm -hmm. because the pilgrimage is really is the pilgrimage of God's people from mm -hmm. Exodus right to the Promised Land and yeah. the pilgrimage through time until the coming of, of Christ. But then it's the pilgrimage of the church through two millennia, but then it's your pilgrimage. Yes. This isn't a, pi a pious exercise. It's more like uh, an adventure? discovering <laughs> an adventure for sure, but it's more like discovering also the relevant uh, paradigms for our own lives. Yes. Sometimes we enter into a nostalgia for paradise and we need the encouragement of watching the process of pilgrimage. Uh -huh. the, this uh, is not something that's just a historical memory. It's something, uh, that's why the beauty of pilgrimage, the pilgrimage in person and the virtual pilgrimage, uh, take us along a path that actually reflects our whole life. Yes. And we can be going through, obviously different participants will be going through different phases of this process in their own lives maybe with illness, maybe with family tensions, maybe mm -hmm. with financial difficulties or other personal frustrations they'll be dealing with. And to be able to reread this as part of a pilgrimage. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, when we start with the temples in Egypt and we're you know, on the Nile, seeing where the ancient Israelites not only lived in Goshen in the beautiful northern part, but the different things that as slaved, enslaved people, what they built. And we can say, okay, in my own life, what temples am I building to what idols in a way, or what is enslaving me? Uh, some of the things you had just mentioned. And then the wonderful opportunity to be able to go to the Red Sea and cross over the Red Sea, see what it looks like on the other side, reflect what it means to you know, let this wave of God's grace come into our lives. And then sitting on the other seashore, which is actually called the Moses Coast, believe it or not, looking about out at Egypt and saying, okay, well, I've come out, I've heard the call, uh, I've come out, and now I'm coming into a desert. And I don't know how many people have had the chance to go, actually our guides told us it was very rare to go from the, de for the Red Sea and into Sinai following that route. It's not common anymore, it used to be very common. But to see what they saw, to contrast it, to the green of the Nile, to the temples, and then saying, okay, well, we have these amazing temples and gods, unusual figures, right? And then we have this little tiny, um, eventually when they get to Mount Sinai, this little tiny tent, this little tiny tabernacle. But then being at the Mount of Sinai will, will take you up to the very top where Moses received those commandments. We'll show you where Elijah traditionally was there in prayer, was encountered by God. And that's why I wanted to also make the relationship between um, Mount Sinai and also the Mount of Transfiguration because Moses and Elijah, they both longed to see the Lord. And that final beatitude, pure of heart, because they will see the Lord. This is the whole point of the pilgrimage, so that we can see him even entering into the promised land. So, This process, I think, yeah. is very interesting for life because just a, a young couple get married. Yes. And it's all, you know, almost like Hollywood and they have all the ce <laughs> celebration and everything. But after a couple of years, it can be a desert experience. Yes, absolutely. After a decade or after two decades, it could be a desert experience. Um, the same thing, our health, we're very enthusiastic. We can engage in new things, but then uh, we can have a health collapse. Yep. And then going through that desert. And so this uh, pilgrimage is very important, very relevant. It's not something that's in a sense disconnected uh, from the real life. A pilgrimage isn't an escape from the real life for a moment just to forget about it like sometimes a vacation can be. But a pilgrimage is actually taking the bull by the horns if you will, which you should never do. You should take the bull by the nose but that's a conversation <laughs> for another day. Yes it is. <laughs> so uh, being a farmer's boy I can tell you that. But um, the, the whole idea of uh, this is something that addresses my life today in the circumstances of the 21st century in so many different cultures where our people are living, the participants are living, and yet it can be so relevant. Well, I think what's neat, not only looking at the different temples and thinking, okay, what am I, what am I building in my life? To what God? <laughs> Maybe the God of myself or whatever. But going through the deserts, it's remarkable when we go through the desert of Sinai, into the Negev, into also the desert of the, um, the Arava, which is the southern part, into Moab, which also there's a lot of deserts in that southern part of Jordan. Uh, they're all desert, but they're different. And so it's almost as if in my own life I can see um, 
make an analogy. It's really, yeah. that's what a pilgrimage is, as you were saying. It has a lot to do with my own life. And, and then the moral drawing life lessons can also, from that. Yeah. Yeah. And the moral life, the effort of the moral life itself <laughs> is also can be very desert. Yes. Uh, sometimes, you know, we see the saints that went through Saltines and we say they were great, but they went through concentration camps, they went through yep. tortures, they went through... Uh, very difficult circumstances, hostility, rejection. Well, if you think about our own St. Catherine of Alexandria, who was one of the first martyrs for the faith. She was a brilliant woman and she was, she was tortured and killed in Egypt. And so, but not only her, in fact, going on with that, uh, we have the chance every Sunday to visit with one of the desert fathers, one of the fathers of the desert. There's a, there a lot feature. of hermitages, mm -hmm. different areas that we'll actually see and be able to reflect on their words and, and look at the desert and try to apply it to our own, mm -hmm. our own path, our own pathway. And eventually we will make it up through uh, the Jordan Valley, well, the Moab Plains of Moab, and to Mount Nebo, where with Moses we'll look down into the Promised Land and go down to the Jordan River and make that crossing with Joshua. So it's a very full pilgrimage, but again, always with the idea of, of um, applying it to our own lives. So we'll have a chance to see where we are. We'll talk about what happened, especially at the beginning in Moses' life and the, um, the ancient Israelites. And then we'll jump into the Ten Commandments. There's a lot of um, nuance, actually. Uh, just take one, you shall not steal. That seems very clear cut, but there's a lot of applications in our own life Ooh. that I think will be wonderful for us to reflect on. Internet music. <laughs> well, uh, well, yes, it's, it's very interesting, right? Um, but that's not even just stealing. There's, uh -huh. there's I mean, directly stealing right. property. There's so much more that's involved with that. So um, we hope you can join us to do that. But every day what we wanted to invite you to do is to take out, to make your own tablet. So about a 20 minute visit to the site, talking about the relevance in scripture, um, talking about the relevance in our own moral lives, and then saying, okay, I'm gonna take a moment, maybe a, a minute or two or longer, and I'm gonna pull out a notebook. You know, a notebook has two sides, kind of like this, you know, open it up like a tablet. And so it's like, okay, what is it the Lord is asking me specifically in everything that's been seen and said? What's the call he's making to me? Where do I need to listen more? Where do I need to go out from? Or where do I need to enter into his grace? And so every day it's just a Or where do I need thing. to climb a mountain? Where do I need to climb a mountain? Right, that would be entering into his grace as right. well. Exactly, right. Father. And so it's important every day to have this little bit and it makes the pilgrimage real. And then being able to pray with everyone together in, in the Eucharistic celebration with Father, I think is also very key. So those are the elements of our, of our pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. And the, the theme or the motto really is out of Egypt I have called my son and of course that comes straight from the gospel right making well it's making reference though to an old testament book uh, the gospel was making reference to jesus when he was called out of egypt as a baby with his parents in matthew's gospel mm -hmm, in matthew and then it goes back to the prophet hosea who actually was using that imagery and it applies to each and every one of us. He's asking us, he's inviting us, I think, this Lent to come out have of an exodus. Come out of Egypt. I've come called you. Come out of you. slaveries, come out of yes. negativities, negative thinking. Yeah. Yes, I think so. And so the big question mark that we all have in our own lives is, uh, where do I need to be free? Does he hear my call for freedom, right? Does he hear that call? And just like the ancient Egyptians or the ancient Israelites, he does hear that call. So wonderful. Again, we just want to invite each and every one of you to not only subscribe to our YouTube channel, Magdala English. I was afraid you were going to forget that commercial. Oh. <laughs> the new YouTube channel, Magdala English. Did you hear that? Magdala English. And the most important thing is not that you subscribe. That's taken for granted. That you invite some other people because it's a transfer from one YouTube channel to yep. another because of the growth at Magdala is always a challenging moment. And many people could miss uh, Catherine of Alexandria or Kathleen <laughs> of Colorado. So we need to make sure that the transfer is yeah. reaching a lot of people. Can you help us doing that? And also, if you do register, not just subscribe on the YouTube channel, but if you register for the pilgrimage, we do have a couple of concluding talks. We'll be with you in Jerusalem, actually, just before that, during the Triduum, so that we can live that together in the holy sites where it took place, where our exodus, our, our freedom is actually made real through the passion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in our conclusive talks, we will have our drawing. We have some wonderful things from Egypt itself that we would like to gift to you. Anybody like a camel? <laughs> Except for the camel. <laughs> yes. So please do register and we hope you can join us uh, for daily mass. With what about Father a pyramid? Would you like a pyramid? 
<laughs> that, why not? So join us every day for Mass with Father Eamon Kelly and then our virtual pilgrimage with me and our wonderful team. And we're praying for all of you from the That's Holy a Land. very important thing that you pray for the pilgrimage, yes, please. please, because a pilgrimage is not all the show that Kathleen and her team set up here and we are trying to help as well, <laughs> but it's actually a work of grace. Yes. Like the whole history of salvation. So let's pray. Let's pray in our hearts. Let's pray daily. Let's do some little thing that this pilgrimage would be truly a blessing. Maybe for many people that never heard of Magla before will be able to receive this blessing of this pilgrimage. Thank you for that reminder. In fact, if you know Father Eamon's sister, Celine, she'll be helping us. We do have a specific group of intercessors for the pilgrims on this pilgrimage. So you can certainly be part of that as well. Look for more information and we hope you can join us in many ways. All right. Thank you and God bless you. God bless you. Welcome.